mm. roller coaster in the world is brought down to the ground today. But did Kings Island hide the truth about the roller coaster's safety? Son of Beast, one of the most ambitious but also problematic roller coasters ever built. But to find the roots of Son of Beast, we need to head back in time to the year 1972 when Kings Island and Mason, Ohio would open its gates. They would open with three roller coasters, Woodstock Express, a PTC family wooden roller coaster, Bavarian Beetle, a Zycon Galaxy, and probably the most important coaster of the three, the Racer, a PTC wooden roller coaster. These coasters would put Kings Island on the map, but they would not open their first monster of a coaster till the year 1979 when Kings Island would open the Beast, a building house wooden roller coaster. The builder of the Beast, Charles Den, would go on to start his own roller coaster company known as the Den Corporation. This company having a huge role in the coaster wars. To find the start of the coaster wars, we need to travel down to Sandusky, Ohio in the year 1989 when Cedar Point would open Magnum XL 200, the world's first hyper coaster and any coaster over 200 feet. In the same year, Dorney Park would open Hercules, a Den Corporation wooden coaster designed by Curtis D. Summers. Hercules would open as the world's tallest, fat, tallest wooden roller coaster, standing at a height of 95 feet and having a 151 foot drop. Then a year later, in 19, 1990, Six Flags Over Texas would open the Texas Giant, the new world's tallest wooden roller coaster, standing at a height of 143 feet. However, Dorney Park still claimed they had the tallest wooden roller coaster because Hercules still had the larger drop at 151 feet, leading to a lawsuit between the two parks over which one had the taller coaster. However, this never really mattered because just one year later, Cedar Point would open Mean Streak, another Den Corporation wooden roller coaster designed by Curtis D. Summers. Mean Streak would stand at a mass of 161 feet and have a 155 foot drop. Making it clear, it was the new tallest wooden roller coaster. Then the next year, in 1992, a new park in Texas, known as Fiesta Texas, now Six Flags Fiesta Texas, but opened the Rattler, the first coaster built by RCCA, or the Roller Coaster Corporation of America. Rattler would stand at a mass of 179 feet, but would only have a drop of 124 feet. RCCA would deliver, would build a few more wooden roller coasters before Son of Beast, one being Wild Wild West, now known as Bandit in Movie Park, Germany. This is known as one of the worst coasters in the world. This leads us into the worst roller coaster ever built, Son of Beast, which would open as 2,000 as the world's tallest, fastest, and only looping wooden roller coaster, staying at a height of 218 feet and having a 214 foot drop. Son of Beast would be classified as a wooden hyper coaster, hitting a top speed of 78 miles an hour, including, including a 119 foot vertical loop, with the ride experience being as follows. Son of Beast starts off with a drop out of the station and then goes into a small pre-lift section that leads into the 218 foot lift hill. Then you drop off the lift hill into a small pre-drop section that leads into the 214 foot drop. Then you go into a large banked hill that leads into the Rose Bowl double helix that will be important later in the video. This leads into the mid-course break run which we will talk about later. Then into the iconic 119 foot vertical loop which was said to be the best part of the ride. This leads into a smaller and much less intense helix which leads, leads into a drawn out camelback hill that lacked any airtime. That then leads into a small turn to the right, which leads you into the final breaks, ending your ride on Son of Beast. Son of Beast would have many issues during his time at King's Island that came clear on opening day when King's Island closed Son of Beast the same day it opened for about a month, saying they spotted a 15-foot rough spot on the second hill of the ride. But this was the smallest issue, as later on we would find out that RCCA was fired during the construction of Son of Beast, with the park suing RCCA for all the problems the ride would have. However, King's Island still claimed that Son of Beast was completely safe ever on July 9, 2006, we would find out this was never the case, as that night a train would run through the Rose Bowl section of the ride, weakening the wood supports at Bent 290, causing a support piece to crack. This train would return to the station with no issues, then the ride crew would send out the next train, which would run over the same weakened supports pieces, causing a small jolt that probably felt like a small car accident. All 27 riders on this train were taken to the hospital after they noticed the injured state of the guests. They would also stop the ride, tra heading up the lift hill, before this accident got worse. So what caused this to happen? Let's start with the train Son of Beast would run. 
three premier rise trains, which were much heavier than normal wooden coaster trains, but Sonic Beast would never actually run all three trains due to issues with the ride block zones. A block zone is a section of ride that only one train may occupy. At the end of a block zone is a method to stop a train. This is a safety system that keeps roller coaster trains from colliding. The issues with the block zones come from the mid-course brake run because from a full stop, the train would go slow, so slow through the vertical loop. So because of this, the ride would only run two trains. However, even with only running two trains, the structure of the ride and led to the support cracks. So how did Cedar Fair fix it? Well, they fixed the structure of the ride and got lighter trains for the ride that could not complete the loop, leading to the end of the best part of the ride, with the loop being replaced by a small bunny hop. This was the beginning of the end for Sonic Beast. The ride would reopen on July 4, 2007, just about a year after the accident in 2006. This version of Sonic Beast was still just as rough as before and was missing the best part of the ride, making it boring, rough, and a coaster that was just there to hold the wooden coaster records. Then in 2009, Sonic Beast would close for the second time. And what would be the last time we would ever see the coaster run? So why did Sonic Beast close again? Well, because another accident happened on the ride. As a woman who rode the ride earlier in the year reported that she suffered a bursted blood vessel in her brain in June of 2009. So Cedar Fair closed the ride down and waited to see what to do with the ride. It also did not help because around this time they were still dealing with the lawsuits from the 2006 accident. And an inspector from the accident went on the news talking about how Kings Island knew about the issues of the ride from the start. And when an issue came up, they would quote-unquote fix it band-aid style. It also did not help because King Holland lost their lawsuit against RCCA's insurance company in 2008. So not only was King Holland dealing with lawsuits, injuries, and losing their lawsuit, they also needed to figure out what to do with Sonic Beast. They really had three choices. One, they could have taken the chance on RMC, who had just worked on another coaster from the Coaster Wars, the Texas Giant, now known as the new Texas Giant, that opened in 2011. However, this was a huge risk, and Cedar Fair only had one talk with RMC and would not buy their first coasters from them till 2018 with Twisted Timbers, Steel Bennett, and Railblazer. Another choice they had was to fix the ride the way it was and reopen it. This could have been a full retrack or some work on the track and supports or could have just reopened the ride the way it was because they were not found liable for the woman's injuries. However, Cedar Fair made the easiest choice and removed Son of Beast in 2012. This came after they removed the ride from the park map and website after the 2010 season. However, King Island did not fully erase Son of Beast as they used Outpost 5, the station of Son of Beast, for a haunted house known as Wolfpack from 2010 to 2019. With the station still standing to this day to remind people of the former coaster you can also see track pieces coming out of the station from Son of Beast, and King Island will replace Son of Beast with another record-breaking coaster, Banshee, the world's longest inverted coaster in the world, with an, with an internal flame and the theme graveyard for Banshee to remember the fallen Son of Beast, and Son of Beast's father, the Beast, is still roaring in the woods, peeking over the trees, looking at where his son once roared, and waiting for them to roar together once again. Bye guys, see you all next time. Give me your thoughts on Son of Beast and if you think we'll ever see the coaster again.